Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. You may have heard that Google has announced a new tier of Chromebook called Chromebook Plus, and I happen to have one of them here. And we're gonna be doing a two-parter this week, where in this first video, we're going to explain what Chromebook Plus is all about and how it's different than a regular Chromebook. And then we'll take a look at one of the Chromebook Plus models, which is this one from Lenovo that we'll get to a little bit later in the week. Now, before we jump into this, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the Chromebook that will be on demo in this video was provided to the channel on loan from Lenovo. When we're done reviewing it in our upcoming video, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and learn a little bit more about Chromebook Plus. Now, when I first heard they were adding the word plus to the end of the Chromebook brand, I thought perhaps this might be a new subscription plan. It is not though a subscription plan. It is a hardware specification and there are some features that come along with that specification due to the added horsepower. It's kind of a premium tier, although the pricing on these is not all that outrageous. They start at around 400 bucks for uh, the minimum configuration that meets the standard. Now that standard requires a minimum of an i3 12th generation processor from Intel or a Ryzen 3 7000 series processor from AMD. That is the floor here. So your machine has to meet that in order to be considered a Chromebook Plus. There are some additional specifications that the Chromebook also must have. That includes eight gigabytes of RAM at a minimum, 128 gigabytes of storage, again, at the minimum. It needs at least a full HD 1080p IPS display, so they can't cheap out on the display here either. It should get about 10 hours of battery, and I assume that is doing more basic tasks and it also needs to have a 1080p webcam with noise reduction. Now, if you have an existing Chromebook that meets these minimum specifications, it will become a Chromebook Plus in the coming weeks when Google starts pushing down your regular Chrome OS updates. So some of the features that you're going to see here will show up on your Chromebook, but again, it has to meet this minimum set of specifications. Now on the surface, there isn't much of a difference between a Chromebook Plus and the regular Chromebooks from a user perspective because they're not taking any features away from the lower tier Chromebooks. So you could still install your Linux applications, you've got your Android apps here, and of course you have the Chrome browser that will also run like it did before. They are though adding some significant new features in the near future, which are not yet available at the time I'm shooting this video. And most of those involve generative AI, where you'll be able to have AI insert text anywhere in the operating system where there's a text input, for example. They're also gonna let you change your wallpaper with generative AI suggestions. A lot of cool stuff related to uh, AI that will only be available on the Chromebook Plus, although I think a lot of that stuff is going to run server side. Now, there are though features that are not on regular Chromebooks and they are more subtle. So we're gonna dive into a bunch of those here, starting with the wallpaper. So on Chromebook Pluses, if you go into your wallpaper, you will see that you'll have the option to use some of these exclusive to Chromebook Plus wallpapers. And what will happen with these two here that were available at the time I'm recording, the wallpaper will change throughout the day here. So right now I'm kind of in the morning, so we've got uh, more of a morning uh, look here to my wallpaper, but as the day progresses here, it will kind of adjust to the time of day. Nothing spectacular, but kind of a nice little personalization, and over time they will be adding more and more of those to the mix. Another feature involves the files application, and if we go back to our full screen view here and pull up files, uh, what you will see is now the ability to synchronize your Google Drive with your Chromebook's local storage. So if I click on Get Started here, what I can do now is sync up the entire Google Drive to this device. So if I'm on the road, I have all of my files available to me, even if I don't have an internet connection. Now, of course, all the other Chromebooks can do Google Docs offline if you had a spreadsheet or a document that you wanted to edit. On the Chromebook Plus now, I can synchronize the entire drive and all the files in it with my Chromebook, so I have access to those things all the time. 
The problem with this feature is that you do need to have enough local storage to make it work. So at the time I'm recording this video, if you've got 600 gigabytes on your Google Drive and only 128 gigs on your Chromebook, you're not gonna be able to do any synchronization. It would be nice for them to add some features to allow you to choose which files or folders you want to keep in sync. And I think that's something that is gonna be relatively easy to add in software over time. But right now it's an all or nothing proposition. All right, this next feature involves the webcam. We're recording at 1080p on our Chromebook with the built-in camera application, but these camera controls you're gonna see apply universally. So when the camera is activated, you're going to see a little icon here pop up on the bottom of your Chromebook taskbar. And there you've got quick access to your mic where you can mute it immediately. You can also turn your video off right away too if you need to. And then what you've got are some additional controls that will pop up here. Now I'm gonna turn off my lights here in the studio real quick and that's gonna make things a lot darker. And you can see the camera does a pretty nice job on its own kind of filling things in, but I can also enable the improve lighting feature here, which will try to improve things a little bit. What's funny is it's trying to bring up the brightness in the most shadowy part of the image here, but it looks like it could do a little bit better on the other side of my face. But it gives you an idea as to how this works. And that looks like it's going a little better now. So in any environment, in any application, you have the same controls here that you can activate to try to improve the image quality. Additionally, it will also do background blur, and this is the image that it will send to whatever application that's using the camera. So if I go over here to light, it will blur things out lightly, or if I click on full here, it'll do a more aggressive blur. And what I like about this is that it sits at the operating system level. So this image is what gets fed into whatever I'm doing that is using the webcam, whether it be Google Meet, Zoom, or whatever else I've got my webcam attached to and it does give you a little more control than you might have in your individual applications. Another neat feature of this is that this is consistent from one Chromebook Plus to the next, so it doesn't require any additional driver software like I often see on the Windows side to achieve these kinds of features. Additionally, there are some noise cancellation features built in as well, so if you're in a noisier environment and you want to focus just on your voice, you can enable that here. All right, if you're curious as to how this noise cancellation works, I'm gonna switch on a vacuum cleaner here. And now you can't hear much, but if I go ahead and activate the noise cancellation, you can probably make out my voice a little bit better now. Now they've also added some photo features that are typically found on their Pixel phones. So if I jump into Google Photos here and go over to Edit, and then select the toolbox here, I will have now the Magic Eraser tool which is something that is usually only found on the Pixel phones. And if I draw a circle around this bozo here, it will take him out of the picture and improve that picture significantly, as you can see. I still have to do some work here on the shadows down below, but this is one of the Chromebook Plus exclusive features inside of Google Photos. Another one is the ability to have it create portrait mode photos from your regular pictures that you've got in your library. And you also get access to their creation features inside of Google Photos. Again, something you might have on your phone, but now you've got it on your Chromebook and you can create collages, movies, and even some of these really cool cinematic photos. And I would imagine that Google is also hoping that the Chromebook Plus standard will bring some more robust applications to the Chrome OS platform. This application is called Luma Fusion. And although you can install this on just about any Chromebook, they did make some optimizations targeting the two processors that are currently in the Chromebook Plus specification. It is still very rough around the edges, especially compared to DaVinci Resolve, which you can find for free on the Windows platform. It is though coming along, and it's something that you weren't able to do all that well on Chromebooks in the recent past. So I think we're gonna start seeing a little bit more robustness coming out uh, from developers who now have kind of a standard to shoot for. Before it was kind of all over the place as to what processor your Chromebook might have on board. But now if you target Chromebook Plus with your application, you as a developer have some sense as to what minimum requirements that that machine is going to have for your app. So at the moment, we're not seeing a huge difference here between what a Chromebook Plus can do versus what a regular Chromebook can do. But I think over time, we're going to see a lot more differentiation. 
I've been reviewing Chromebooks now for the better part of a decade, and over the course of time, whenever I look at a more premium Chromebook, people often wonder, what's the point? What can you do with this one that you can't do on a lower cost one? And I get the sense that Google is trying to differentiate things a bit here, given how more robust Chrome OS has become over the last couple of years. The good news is that a Chromebook Plus with the specifications we talked about doesn't really cost any more than what a similar spec Chromebook would have looked like a year ago. So there's not a real cost premium here, but I think Google's trying to better differentiate the, cap the capabilities of different Chromebooks so consumers have a better idea as to what they're getting when they're going into it. If you buy a Chromebook Plus, it will presumably be able to run all the things that are designed for the Chromebook Plus side of the platform versus the regular Chromebooks that are a little more basic. What was most interesting about this announcement, though, is that the hardware specifications did not include any ARM-based Chromebooks. And of course, Apple has switched their entire architecture over to ARM for the Mac. We are seeing a growing number of Windows machines running with Qualcomm ARM processors. And even on the Chrome OS side, I've seen more and more Chromebooks running on ARM lately, although those are admittedly at the lower end of the spectrum. But at the moment, Chromebook Plus is x64 only. And I think, again, Google is looking to simplify things for the consumers, define a delineation in the hardware platform. You can do more with a Plus. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more of what you can do on Plus in the coming months. And of course, we will cover that as time goes on. We'll also have a review of this Chromebook from Lenovo that'll be coming up very shortly here on the channel as well. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.